Hi everyone, Tea Drinker here. Today I'm reviewing Chainsaw Man episode 3. I've just watched the episode for the very first time, so if you would like to see my full uncut reaction to the episode itself, as well as every episode of the series that I've reviewed, all for just $1 a month, you can subscribe to my Patreon linked in the description down below. With that out of the way, here is my review. So episode three was kind of an interesting one for me to review in the sense that, well, out of the three episodes I've seen of this series so far, I think that this is probably my favorite. Of course, having a very strong pilot episode is just that, it's having a very strong pilot episode. So with that being your initial taste, your chapter one for a story, um, if you can execute the pilot very, very well, that's obviously going to stand to you. And like for me to say that I think that so far episode one is the strongest, you know, a lot of that comes from the fact that it is the pilot and they did such a good job. So that's naturally going to occur. Uh, be that as it may, just with regards to how much I personally enjoyed watching an episode, it has to be episode three so far. I thought it was really, really great stuff. So I want to get into it. So a quick recap about the story is that in this episode, uh, Denji and Pawa have teamed up. Uh, she wants to get back her cat, which is... Uh, in the English version, it's called Miaui, whereas in the Japanese version, it's called Nyako. So I'm just going to call it the cat from the rest of the review. Uh, so Pawa wants to get the cat back, whereas uh, Denji has his goal, which we know all about. And uh, yeah, Pawa says that she can help Denji fulfill that particular goal um, if she helps him um, su uh, subdue Bat Devil. Denji is immediately like, bet. Let's do it. And that is our inciting incident for the duration of the episode. What I really liked about this episode in which, well, of course, we get the reversal both of uh, Pawa having a trick up her sleeve when she knocks Denji unconscious. And then, of course, the plot twisting when the Bat Devil gets the human, but because the human wasn't literally to his taste that he just ends up eating the cat. Uh, that was a great turning point for the episode, a great twist for Pawa. We get we get a moment like that operating in a way that's so great because it shows the vulnerability that power has in a moment like that where for as much as she seems like unhinged and really really out there and unable to be tamed she definitely still has a human side within her she isn't just like the joker as i kind of thought she was akin to in the second episode and alongside that even in the uh even in the prologue section of the episode, uh, her saying that she's always despised humans, but she's always loved cats. Um, because cats haven't tried to hurt her in the same way humans can, we can see her confliction of identity in that kind of a setting. So nonetheless, having this interaction between herself and Denji, Denji, who even though he's acting out of means that aren't the most altruistic, uh, to say the least. We can still see that he's very much affected by emotion. He's talking about the fact that, well, he had strong emotions for Pochita, his dog, and whilst he can't, he can't quite identify with the idea of having that much sympathy for a cat, he can at least have that much sympathy for a dog. So there's a little bit of relatability between the two characters in that moment. Nonetheless, having these two characters interact in this kind of a way, it, it has kind of just been building and building for them to have their big kind of team duo moment. And even though Power was subdued in that moment, in uh, the last, in the second half of this episode, uh, nonetheless, seeing them working together as a team is very, very apt. What I also enjoyed about this episode is more to do with the production point of view. I thought that the ending battle sequence, which is what the entire episode was basically building to, was just so well done. That like break core uh, musical soundtrack operating in the background was just absolutely magnificent. I mentioned in the reaction that during the sequence in which um, his arm is being cut and after the Bat Devil has been split open and presumably power and the cat being saved. So I'm assuming I haven't watched episode four yet, but I mean, they kind of seem to have that sort of emotional resolution that one can infer it. Uh, there is this rising camera shot in which all the blood was falling down from the sky as if it were literally raining blood. And I, I like, and then just cutting to the close up of Denji's face was just absolutely brilliant. Um, Given the fact that this episode opened up with Denji and Pawa being reprimanded by Makima, uh, or the fact that they've left such a devastating 
uh, trail in public. Uh, given this very public fight that DNG has just had with the Bat Devil, I'm very curious to see what the result of this interaction is going to be. With that being said, with that covering basically the external conflict of the show, um, of this episode, that is to say, I want to get into why I think this is my favorite episode of the series thus far, and that has to be the internal conflict that's described. We get this flashback sequence in which Pawa, who's naked for reasons that I, I don't necessarily want to think about from a politically correct standpoint, nonetheless, uh, Pawa, in, we see the flashback to her having the cat and it being taken by hostage by the bat devil her upon finding the stray cat like nursing it back to health we can see that she's always had that kind of altruistic uh sense of responsibility at least in so far as cats go very much to save the cat moment from a screenwriting point of view uh we see in we get that level of introspection through the narration from her when she sees the bat devil eat her cat and she's talking about the sense of loss that she's assuming someone like denji can feel um you know, and you know in the first two episodes i was talking about the sense of nihilism that this show has and the fact that it's able to be very ridiculous and very darkly comedic and even though i didn't necessarily say this in the first two reviews you could still infer from watching the show this far that these are very much the anti-heroes. These are people who were not necessarily meant to be on the side of, they're people who do bad things, and yet we end up relating to them anyway. Uh, somewhat akin maybe to the boys or something like that. But it, it, it's interesting in the sense that Denji is appearing to be much more, let's say, human-like, but he's so young and he's so juvenile and he's so one-track mind, he's thinking with a particular appendage, one might say, that we're able to have a bit more of an emotional distance from them and really just kind of see the pieces fall where they may and be entertained as a result. Whereas with someone like Pawa, we're still trying to figure her out. And I'm a little bit apprehensive moving forward just in the sense that I hate for her to be introduced as like this huge, wild, over-the-top, insane crazy character and then the span of one episode we're now reducing her down to but she has a heart of gold and that's the thing that's going to bring her back down it's like i don't think the show is going to do something as simplistic as that uh, there are only 12 episodes uh, but nonetheless i mean there's still we're still only at the quarter mark i'd like to see them do something a little bit more interesting given the fact that we've essentially spent the entire episode devoted to this one central external conflict, with the exception of a brief B-plot in which we see Makima being instructed uh, by her higher-ups that she isn't to get attached to any of the people on her team. Uh, I I'm curious to see if her as a supporting character is going to be a little bit fleshed out and if her arc is going to mirror the arc, the arc of the two protagonists, or if that's just more so a little bit of world-building um, to show to show us that basically our guys, to use that term, uh, don't really have anyone looking out for them, that it's just going to be Pawa and Denji against the world in that kind of respect. But other than that, I, I want to keep this review relatively brief just because it is, it is a very external conflict-centric episode. And I think that a lot of what they were doing is setting up the, uh, is setting up episode four, in my opinion. I spoke before about how I believe that the first two episodes were really establishing uh, the first act, and that's how I basically feel now. I feel that we're into act two, and with any television show, act two is going to be significantly the longest, whether you're looking at it with regards to a seasonal arc or a series arc. You know, something like, it's not an anime, of course, but something like uh, Breaking Bad, the entire series is essentially act two with the first handful of episodes being Act 1, and then the last handful of episodes being Act 3, essentially. And that's a very, very extreme example of a television show, uh, having an arc uh, ha have that sort of structure. But of course, that seasonal arc, it says nothing of having uh, the... That, that's the series arc. It says nothing about having the seasonal arc and then the episode arc. I think having, having this episode arc center on Pawa realizing that she is quite similar to Denji, 
and Dangy willing to put himself into harm's way for reasons that aren't just satiating his own um, his own lust. It is to do with his ethics. You know, there's even that moment where there's the guy trapped in the car and the Bat Devil says, are you really going to be so pathetic to save a human? And then Dangy, very indignant, says, I don't even care about his life. And then the man drops, but then the man's life is saved anyway. We can show that that isn't Dangy really being that callous towards human life. It's more to do with him wanting to put up this front because he's been slighted, particularly in the uh, previous episode with Hayakama getting him to kill a person and then berating him for what he sees as, as Dengi lacking sympathy. So in that sense, I think that Dengi is shaping up to be a remarkably interesting protagonist and that we're able to have our cake and eat it too, in the sense that Dengi is very immature, very juvenile, his main motivation being hilarious with how absurd and, again, juvenile it is. But we're getting these little seeds planted with regards to Dengi actually rising to the occasion and not wanting to be a devil, for lack of a better term, the type of devil that the Yukaza were. Whether or not the Yukaza actually made a deal with the zombie devil or not, they were just hideous people to the core and i think the similarity that Dengi and Pawa have in that regard is that the two of them do seem to be idealistic and the two of them do seem to in some shape or form value the outside world whether it's going to be a cat or whether in Dengi's case it's going to be something else they seem to be led by something that isn't just anger or justice and doing the right thing and the irony is that because of those traits within themselves, that is what I'm assuming is going to lead to them genuinely being the real altruistic ones. They were the real heroes. They were the heroes we needed, not the heroes we wanted. That sort of dynamic. That being said, the very last thing I want to talk about is, oh my god, that ending song. I did. I loved it beginning to end. I loved all the switches that they had throughout the ending song, and I'm just seeing here it was done by Maximum the Hormone, um, of the of course the fame of Death Note, uh, second OP, um, terrific stuff, and seeing the ending credits having a different animation each time, sublime, absolutely sublime. So I think I'm going to leave it there for today. Again, I want to thank you so much for taking your time to watch. Uh, this entire review. This is my favorite thing to do, so whether you're supporting me on Patreon or just through YouTube, either way, I am so incredibly grateful for you taking your time out of your day to do that. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to get right into episode four right now. Arigato gozaimasu. Thanks for watching.